See you here today. We appreciate you being in the house of the Lord. We welcome any visitor that's visiting with us today. We thank the Lord for the rain and for every blessing. And thank the Lord for you. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, most certainly appreciate you tuning in. The Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edwards speaking. We're hoping during the hour coming up we can be an inspiration to you. And if you know the Lord, you remember us in prayer. If you call someone, have them to tune in. We appreciate that so very much. And if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 23. While you're turning there, I'd like to say to the radio listening audience, if you're not getting our daily broadcast, if you tune to this station where you're now listening each day at 12 o'clock noon, Monday through Saturday, you can get the broadcast. And then if you'd like to have some of our cassette tape, we have them available. Today's singing and message will be on tape number 151. Tape number 151. Now we send these tape out in appreciation for a gift of $3 for each tape. And then the money is used to help pay for the radio expense. And when you're writing in for the tape, write in and get a brochure on our proposed Holy Land tour. We're getting things lined up for this tour. And we'd like to send you a brochure. Maybe some of you reach retirement age. You've never taken a tour of this kind. You've always maybe wanted to see the land where Jesus lived and walked, where he died, buried, and rose again. And this is a wonderful tour, so I hope that you're right in for a brochure. Now, today we're going to read from Matthew chapter 23. And I want to speak to you on what the Bible says about hell. And I won't be able to tell you all the Bible has to say about hell, of course, but some of the things the Bible has to say about hell I want to mention today. I want you to listen and see what thus saith the Lord God. Someone was telling me the other day that this uh, lady that made that commercial on uh, Where's the Beef said she got killed, said she got hit by a Big Mac. Well, I don't know about that. Matthew chapter 23 and beginning with verse 23. Page 1032 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. I have about, I guess, almost a dozen uh, Schofield Bibles on hand. I've accumulated over the past months. And if you're thinking about Christmas time, I can save you about $10 on these Bibles. And uh, maybe some of you wondering what to give your mother and dad or grandparents for Christmas gift. If you don't have a tape recorder, why don't you get them a tape recorder so they can listen to some of the good tapes being put out by ministers and musicians and so forth. Be a great blessing to them. And then, of course, the Bibles we have, we'd be glad to talk with you about. Not in the business of selling Bibles, but I accumulate a few along during the year when I can get them at a bargain in order that I might help you in regard to what you would have to pay for them. And I do have about a dozen on hand at this particular time. In Matthew chapter 23, Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites! For you pay tithe of men, Ananias, and Cunham, and have omitted the weight of matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought to you have done, and not to leave the other undone. Now Jesus said there they should have tithed, but there's other things they should not leave undone. Said, you blind guides which strain a net and swallow a camel. Woe unto you scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. For you made clean the outside of the cup and the platter. But within they're full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisees, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter. That the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. For you are like unto white and sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so you also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. 
Wherefore ye be witness unto yourselves that ye are the children of them that killed the prophets. Fill ye up the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, your generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? Verse 33, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Now, I don't care how much people argue, how much you discuss, how often they try to translate the scriptures in different versions and so forth. They try to make them say what they want them to say. The established fact of hell is still true. It's in the Bible just as certain as there's a heaven, there's a hell. In fact, the Bible has far more to say about hell than it had to say about heaven. Jesus was the greatest hellfire preacher that ever lived. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, had more to say about hell than all the other writers in the New Testament put together. Now, Jesus knew all about hell. He was God, and he created hell, and he created it for a purpose. We'll tell you about that later. And so you can't explain away hell. Now these liberals, these infidels, these modernists and skeptics, they like to try to explain away hell, but you can't do it. You can't take hell out of the Bible. Just as certain as there's a night, there's day. Just as certain as there's a heaven, there's a hell. Just as certain as there's life, there's death. You cannot, you cannot do away with hell. We don't like to talk about it. We don't like to have to... And he that hath the Son hath life, he that hath not the Son hath not life. And so the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. And nobody can go to heaven that doesn't believe in the Son of God, in Jesus Christ for salvation. You may say, now preacher, why will they go? Well, there's only two places. God only gave two destinations. One is heaven and the other is hell. There's no other place for them to go but to hell. Because God said so in the Bible. And if you want to escape a hell, you must know Christ is your Savior ere you depart this life. The Bible said there is a hell. We have the words of the prophets, even the Old Testament. In Psalms chapter 9 and verse 17, he said, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. In Psalms chapter 55 and verse 15, he said, Let death seize upon them and let them go down quick into hell, the Bible tells us. In Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 20, the Bible says hell and destruction are never full. We find in Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 14, Therefore hell hath enlarged itself and opened a mouth without measure. The prophet Ezekiel said in chapter 31 and verse 16, I made the nations to shake at the sound of this fall, then I cast him down to hell. There you have the prophets of the Old Testament and there's many others that tell us about hell. <coughs> you cannot, you cannot deny the fact of hell. It's all through the word of God. And I've given you some of the verses where the prophets mention the fact of hell. Then we have the words of the Lord Jesus himself. Let me give you just a few more of them. In Matthew chapter 11 and verse 23, Jesus said, And thou Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. These are the words of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, Jesus said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus said in Mark chapter 9, and verse 47, If then I offend thee, pluck it out, it's better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell. Now Jesus said this. Jesus made this statement. Jesus said, There's a hell. And then when you come to Luke chapter 16, you have the words of the dying there in Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. You have a poor man that died and he went to heaven. He went into paradise. He didn't go into paradise because he was poor. He went into paradise because he was saved. You have a rich man that died and the Bible said in hell, he lifted up his eyes and been in torment and so forth. So you have here in Luke chapter 16, you have a rich man going to hell. He was wealthy. Now he didn't go to hell because he was wealthy. He went to hell because he rejected God's way to heaven. He rejected God's plan of salvation, rejected Jesus Christ. Therefore, he went to hell when he died. And the Bible tells us what happened to him when he ended up in the regions of the damned. Now you have a lot of cults in, hell, in, the, in the land today that deny the fact of hell. You have the so-called Jehovah's Witnesses, Russellites, Relephantites, 
They deny the fact of a literal burning, tormenting hell. And I, when they won't, they won't be there, but just a matter of a few seconds, they're going to change their mind. But that's sad. We're not glad about that. We're sorry about that. But these no hellites will all end up in hell, burning in the flames of a hell, being tormented forever. Then you have um, uh, other people that deny the existence of hell. Many cults deny the existence of hell. They don't like to talk about it. The liberals deny the existence of hell. They don't like to talk about it. They try to spiritualize the scriptures when it reads about hell. But that is a literal burning, tormenting hell just as certain as you're listening to my voice today. And hell is down in the heart of the earth and down there today there's millions and millions and millions and even billions of people down there screaming in the region of the damned in the flames of hell at this very hour. Every person that died without Jesus Christ dropped off into hell up unto this present moment. You need to realize that the Bible said hell is crowded. In the book of Jude, verse 6, And the angels who kept not their first estate but left their own habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains and the darkness under the judgment of the great day. Now these angels that sin went down into the pit. They went down into the everlasting chains of darkness down in the heart of this earth. And 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5, And God spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. The people that died back in the days of Noah, God said it was a world of ungodly people. And the flood came and drowned them, and their souls ended up in hell. That's where they are today. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, the Bible says, Any of you in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many be that go in thereat. Now, what is the Lord Jesus saying here? Jesus says, Straight is the gate, straight and narrow is the way that lead to life eternal. And only a few people go in. But he said broad and wide is the way that leads to hell. And multitudes will go there according to the Bible. All over this world today you have today alive more than 4 billion people. Did you know only a small minority of that 4 billion people today know anything about Jesus Christ? Did you know that people die like they live? God is not performing miracles at the hour of death for people. They die like they live. If you have 90% of the world's population today without Jesus Christ, you have 90% of them going to hell without Jesus Christ. Beloved, that's bad. That's terrible, but that's fact. You know that's fact. And only a few is going to find the way to heaven. If you're saved, you ought to be glad that you're one of the few, you're in the minority group, you're in that little group that's in the straight and narrow way on the road to glory. Most of the people that's born on this earth will end up in hell. Only just a small group will go to heaven according to the Bible. The Bible is clear on that. You may say now, preach Edwards, if I die and go to hell, I won't be my, by myself. You sure won't. You'll be down there with billions of others screaming and crying and praying and pleading and begging and begging for water and being tormented in the flames of hell. That'll make hell even worse than if only just a few were there. All of that big mob, seeing your relatives and some of your friends and people there that died without God. Now the Bible describes hell as thusly. The Bible says it's a place of fire. Now God said that in the Bible. In Matthew chapter 9 and verse 45, if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It's better for thee to enter into life than having two feet to be cast into hell and the fire that never shall be quenched. The Bible said down in hell there's fire that never shall be quenched. Who said that? Jesus. He was God. He cannot lie. Then hell is a place of death. In Revelation chapter 21 and verse 14, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now the death there refers to the dead in trespassing sins, those that know not God. And then the Bible says death, uh, hell rather is a place of damnation. In Matthew chapter 23 and verse 33, you serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Hell is a place where the damned, the doomed, the people go that die without God. Then again, hell is a place of no return. If you could go to hell and spend a hundred years, a thousand years, a million years, a billion years, and then get out, you might say, well, I'll take a chance. 
but there's never any escape out of hell. At one time a person dies and goes to hell, he remains there in the fire and the torment until the judgment day. On the judgment day he's judged and then he's cast into the lake of fire, a terrible place of torment where he remains forever. That's awful. The same Bible that talks about everlasting life talks about everlasting punishment. If there's an everlasting life and joy and bliss in heaven, there's everlasting punishment in hell according to the Bible. And God's done all he's going to do to keep people out of hell. We have the word of God. Jesus died on the cross. He paid the price that people might be saved. And if they go on and die and go to hell, God's done all he's going to do. Then number four, the Bible said hell is a prepared place. God prepared hell a special place. In Matthew chapter 25 and verse 41, Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Did you know when God prepared hell and that everlasting fire down there, God prepared that for the devil and his angels? See, the angels sinned against God and God kicked them out of heaven and God prepared hell for the devil and his angels, but sinners go there because they can't go to heaven. And God's put sinners there because they won't believe on Christ and they can't go to heaven. It's a prepared place for a prepared people. First, the devil and his angels and lost people go there because there's no other place for them to go. In Isaiah chapter 30, verse 33, for Tophet is ordained of old, yea, for the king is prepared. He hath made it deep and large. The pile thereof is fire and much wood. The breath of the Lord, like a brimstone, doth kindle it. That has reference to a burning place, which is a type of hell the Bible tells us about. Just on the outside of Jerusalem, there's a place there called Hinnon, where the people there died and, and was cast into fire. And that fire burned day and night. Jesus likened that as to hell. Now the Lord willing tonight, I'm going to preach on coming wars, future wars, including the Battle of Armageddon. Here in the past few weeks, you've heard people criticize our president because he believes in Armageddon. And the reason he believes in Armageddon is because the Bible teaches that. And the Bible says it's coming. And you have those opposing him trying to make some big issue out of that and trying to make it appear that he wants to start Armageddon. But they just use that against him. He's not wanting to start Armageddon. He's got sense enough to know it'll come in due time at the end of the tribulation period. We'll be talking about Armageddon tonight, where it'll be fought and what'll happen in the battle of Armageddon, the Lord willing. But the Bible teaches this hell, this burning place on the outside of the city of Jerusalem. 70 AD, whenever a Titus, the Roman general, came in and captured Jerusalem, there 600,000 Jews were killed. And they dragged their bodies out there in the valley of Hinnon. I've been to that valley. I know where it is. I've seen it many times. And those fires burned there day and night. They kept fuel. They kept all kind of fuel and trash and garbage and bodies of human beings piled out there day and night. And that fire burned day and night. Jesus likens that place as to hell fire. Then the Bible tells us who's going to hell. You may say, preach Edwards, you're talking about hell. Who's going there? Well, I'm not trying to be smart, but you're going there if you die unsaved. If you would die, die without Jesus Christ, you're going there. There's no other place for you to go. God's not going to let one person into heaven that dies without being saved. If God should let one person go to heaven, I don't care how good they are, how kind they may be. If God should let one person into heaven without being saved, Every inmate in hell would rise up and say, you're unfair, you're unjust. You let one in that wasn't saved. Why can't you let us in? God is not going to let the first one in that die without Jesus Christ. In Psalm chapter 9 and verse 17, the Bible said, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. We have nations that have forgotten God. Russia has forgotten God. In these countries where they have um, all kinds of religions that they're that to control the people and dominate the people. They have forgotten God. The Bible said whole nations are going to be turned into hell and the people that forget God. In Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8, he said that the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers 
and idolaters and all lies shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. He tells us there the class of people that's going to hell. He said they're fearful, those that, that's afraid to take Christ as a Savior. They're afraid of what people might think about them. They're afraid of what their friends might say about them. They're fearful. They're not man enough and woman enough to accept Christ and live for God. They're fearful of their jobs. They're fearful of their friends. They're fearful of their neighbors, members of their family, and they're not going to take Christ. The Bible said they're going to hell. They're fearful and the unbelieving. This world is filled today with unbelievers. People don't believe this Bible. They ridicule, they mock, they scoff at the Word of God. They don't believe this book. They're going to hell, the Bible said. And the abominable and the murderers, they're going to hell. And homogs and sorcerers and idolaters and all lies. Just in the past few weeks, this nation finally got up in tests of fortitude enough to execute about three people. Well, maybe sooner or later they'll learn some sense and get around to doing what God said in this book. If you send more people to elect to cheer them and put them to death, however you might put them to death in, in, in the state, then uh, and learn some sense, we'll curb some of this crime in this nation. And we're finally beginning to get up a little uh, intestinal of fortitude today and going ahead and doing what God said do in this book. Now, hell is an awful place. The Bible said the murderers are going there. That is people that died without getting saved. Now, a murderer can get saved. A man that commits murder can get saved if he's willing to repent and get right with God. Many of them don't. And the Bible said the murders and idolaters and all lies shall have their part in the fire which burneth with brimstone and so forth. And so God said this crowd is going there. How would you like to go to hell and be there with the Joe Stalins and the Hitlers and the lies and thieves the murderers? And the trash and the, and the corruption of this earth all down there in hell. And the drunks and the dope addicts and gamblers and the curses and the blasphemers. And all of that. Hell is God's dumping verse for the universe. All the ungodly and the filth and ungodliness are going to be dumped off into hell. All the pure, the holy, and the righteous are going to heaven to a holy, clean, righteous place. So hell is God's dumping ground for the universe. And it's on fire down there. And they're being cast in every day. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 8, In flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, that obey not the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 18, the Bible says, If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? They're going to appear in hell, exactly like God said in this book. Now, the Bible said hell has no end. In Mark chapter 9 and verse 44, the Bible said, Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. In Mark chapter 3 and verse 29, But he, shall, he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath no forgiveness, but in danger of eternal damnation. Eternal damnation, the Bible said. Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 11 speaks about these things. But I'm glad the Bible tells us what we can do about being saved. Here many years ago, out here on College Avenue, there's a, a church located there at that time. And across the street was an infidel that ridiculed, made light of the people there, cussed the preacher, cussed God, cussed the Bible, and always making light of the little church over there. And uh, he didn't believe in God. He didn't believe in the Bible. He didn't believe in hell. And he took seriously ill one night. And he came to the end of life's journey. And in his dying moments, he was pulling the pillow over his face, screaming, Somebody, somebody help me. I'm burning. Get my feet out of the fire. I'm burning. I'm burning. I'm burning. I'm going to hell. And the man dropped off into hell. Yonder in Baldwin, Georgia, many years ago, in the early days of my ministry, I was a meeting then. Someone told me about this man that was an ungodly man, blasphemer, hated God, hated Christians, didn't believe the Bible, didn't believe in heaven, didn't believe in hell. He came down the other way one time, and just before he died, he began to scream, my bed's on fire, my clothes on fire, I'm burning, somebody please get me out of this fire. And the man screamed and screamed for somebody to get him out of the fire, but a veil dropped off into hell. When the morticians came in to pick up his body, they said his body was still hot. Hot, not just warm, but still hot. That man felt the flames of hell before he ever left his body. 
down here in Crawford, Georgia, many years ago, I was in a tent meeting at the close of service one night. A dear lady came up to me and she said, Preach Edwards, there's a man died down here not too long ago. It is a horrible thing. Said the man died lost and said just before he drew his last breath, he began to scream and said, I'm burning, I'm on fire, I'm on fire. Somebody please help me. Somebody put out this fire. And the man died and went to hell. Many years ago, during the Civil War, there was a young man uh, that uh, was wounded in the war and put in the hospital in Virginia. He had a friend in Atlanta, had a brother that lived in Atlanta that got saved and loved the Lord. And he was worried about his brother in the Veterans Hospital in Virginia. So he called a train to go up there and try to win him to God. He knew he was seriously ill, he'd been wounded, and he wasn't sure he'd recover. And he made his way into the hospital and went to his brother's bed. And his brother's grasping for breath. And he told him, he said, I've come in line to see you. And he said, I want to talk to you about your soul. I've been saved. I love God. And you need Jesus. That man grasping for breath said, don't bother me. I hardly have breath enough to live. And I don't want to talk to you about religion. I cannot I'm not talk to you about God. Just let me alone. And his brother from Atlanta said, I thought, well, i just lie down and take me a short nap. He was sleeping. When I wake up, maybe he'll be feeling better, and I can help him to God. The man living for Atlanta lay down and dozed off to sleep. And while he was asleep, he dreamed. He dreamed that, that the devil came in, and his brother jumped up out of the bed to try to get away from Satan and tried to run out the door, and the demons of hell grabbed him, and, and he heard his brother scream into the top of his voice as, he, as the devil pulled his soul out of his body. And he woke up and looked, and his brother just died. He said, my God, God, let me see what happened to my brother. He's dead. He's gone to hell. If God let me get back to Atlanta, Georgia, I'll tell everybody I meet about Jesus. I don't want anybody else to go to hell. It's awful. My brother died and went to hell, and God let me see plainly what happened to him. And that's awful. You can be saved. You don't have to go to hell. In John chapter 3 and verse 16, said, For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed him should not perish but have everlasting life. You don't have to go to hell. You can be saved. In John chapter 1 verses 11 and 12. The Bible says he came unto his own. And his own received him not. But to as many as received him. Them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even them that believe on his name. You don't have to go to hell. In Romans chapter 10 verses 9, 10 and 13. The Bible says if thou have confess that I am after the Lord Jesus. And shall believe in thine heart that God's raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans chapter 10, verse 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You don't have to go to hell, but you can go and ignore this message today. Some of you out there in the radio listening to us right now, know, know that hell moves beneath you and opening a mouth to catch you when you fall there. And you know that. And yet you go on without God. And one of these days you're going to fall into that terrible, horrible pit in a flame of fire screaming. And it'll be too late. Why don't you get on your knees right now and repent. And receive Christ as your Savior before you die and go to hell. People are going to hell every minute screaming in the regions of the damned. You don't have to go there. You can get saved. But if you die without getting saved, you're going there. Jesus said you're going there. And you'll never be able to get out. You'll never be able to be reconciled to God. When you once die without Jesus Christ, that's it. God's done all he's ever going to do to keep you out of hell. God sent his son to die on a cross. He shed his blood. He was buried. He rose again. He has sent him back to heaven. He's ready to save you. And if you go on and die without him, if you reject that invitation, you'll never get out of hell. You'll burn and be tormented forever, whether you believe it or not. These poor old Russellites that call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses, many of them are screaming in hell. Most of them are going to hell because they don't believe in hell. They say that there's no hell, but they'll find out. Some of you don't believe in hell, but you'll find out. Sooner or later, there's a burning hell. What do you want to go there for? The devil wants you to go. The devil hates God, hates God's people. The devil doesn't want anybody to get saved. He wants to lead the human race to hell, and he's doing a pretty good job. And you don't have to go. You can get saved today. I hope you'll get saved right now. It's a point of the men wants to die, and after that, the judgment. Out there in the radio, listen, orders. get out on your knees, repent, and receive Christ right now as your Savior. You'll always be glad that you did. You in the auditorium here, you listen well. Let's stand to our feet. Our Father, I pray you'll take the message. I pray that you're penetrated to stamp it upon our hearts and minds. God, I pray somebody 
will be saved today as a result of this message. God use it. May somebody escape hell forever. God by being saved today. Bless thy people. Have your way. Use the word of God. May your name be honored. I pray in Jesus name. Amen. Now while Debbie plays for us. Are you listening? If you're in this building unsaved. If you're here backslidden. If you're here and you want to join this church. If you're here and you want to come down here for any reason. You may come. And I hope you respond to the invitation. I'll be right here to, waiting for you to help you if you'll come. How about it? I've given you a message on hell. Hell's a fact. Hell's a reality. Hell's a place. People go there because they reject Jesus Christ. They go there because they die without God. Nobody goes to heaven that dies without God. I don't care who they are. Whether they're kings or queens, professors, preachers, or whatnot. Nobody goes to heaven that know not Jesus Christ. They die and go to hell. I don't care how clean they've lived, how good they've been, how wealthy they are, how popular they may be. They go to hell if they die without Jesus. If God is speaking, would you come? While we wait, would you come?